I'm not an off-road expert. To be honest, I don't really even like playing in mud. However, especially for you, I decided to test something that can go over a puddle like this without any problem. And with a bit of luck, I'm going to be dry. This is Sherp. The name comes from the Sherpa people, formerly a nomadic tribe living in the Himalayan region. Sherpa men are often guides and aides during mountaineering expeditions. So the name Sherp is no accident, because this vehicle was conceived with transporting of people and equipment through inaccessible terrain. It's very cleverly designed, starting with the wheels. These tires are low pressure tires, so you can deflate them on the go or inflate them with exhaust fumes. So this is actually quite convenient. And they are also surprisingly strong. It's virtually impossible to damage them from the track side. However, should the sidewall get damaged, you use some wire to stitch it, put a patch on it, and you should be fine to go. Another interesting thing is this. It's an auxiliary additional tank. There are four of these all the way around. Each is about 60 liters, 58 liters, and you can use them to store extra fuel, water, whatever liquid you need to have with you. What you have to remember though is which one is which, so it's best to mark them. For example, fresh water and uh, diesel, because it's uh, impossible to remove them and decontaminate them. Well, you can buy new ones, I suppose, along with the wheels, but that's how it works. Speaking of fuel, Sherp fuel consumption is calculated in machine hours, so it uses an average of 2-3 liters per hour. It takes 56 liters of diesel into the main fuel tank. Access to engine and drivetrain is easy, making it possible to carry out most maintenance and repair work on the spot. Up to six people can travel in a Sherp, two in the front and four in the back here sitting on these side benches, they can hold on to these straps, hold on dear for their lives because this thing does shake a bit when uh, off-road. Uh, however, if you and your buddy, for example, go fishing, let's say, uh, you can sleep here. So, for example, this unfolds like so, it's suspended, and uh, yeah, there are those two benches that you can use for sleeping. Now, depending on purpose of this vehicle, because for example, Americans have a pickup version, and uh, if you don't want to pick up, if this is supposed to be a rescue, um, rescue vehicle, you can have a raised floor so that you can put a stretcher here. Why raised floor? Because in the middle, there's a hump there, and that hump is the engine. It's a Japanese Kubota 1.5 diesel engine. Now, under this floor here, there are two storage compartments and there is also access to drive chains, which drive the wheels. Sherp is powered by a 44 horsepower 1.5 liter Kubota diesel. There is a small fuel container above the engine, which supplies fuel even when Sherp is climbing steep obstacles. And it climbs them without a problem. Boulders or broken trees are no obstacle for the Sherp. Its ground clearance is 60 centimeters air circulates between the tires, so wheels are the suspension. Okay, I'm not familiar with this type of setup. Perhaps if you operate a digger or something like that, you may be more familiar with this setup, but I'm not, so I'm gonna take you through it. Okay, there is a gear lever with reverse and five forward gears. So Sounds, uh, sounds straightforward enough. Uh, there's an ignition and a battery switch. Again, straightforward enough. Now, there's a clutch pedal, looks familiar, and an accelerator pedal, looks familiar as well. But where on earth are the brakes and the steering wheel? Well, here they are. These two levers, if you pull them both, you brake. If you pull one of them, one side brakes and then the Sherp turns in this direction. What else is there? There are a plethora of buttons and switches here. Some are straightforward, like for example, the window uh, washer, wiper, heater, uh, your horn, lights, even indicators. Though the Sherp is not road legal, but it does have indicators, so it can indicate to other um, people on the expedition where it is going. Now, another thing is it that it's not very straightforward. That's the 
chain lubrication button. So if the chains, the drive chains need lubrication, you press one of these buttons and lubrication happens. Sounds very useful. What else is there? A couple of, well, four actually, gauges. So there's your uh, oil temperature, your fuel gauge, your uh, battery gauge, and a gauge showing how many hours this thing has worked. There is a hatch to go up on the roof, but it's actually more convenient to go from the outside and climb there. Uh, there are also a couple of pockets here and USB ports and 12 volt, volt sockets. And uh, yeah, I suppose in one of these, you're ready for an expedition to the end of the world. Sherp is designed to resemble a boat on wheels, but a boat nonetheless. It can go on water and float even without the wheels. And with the wheels, it has over three tons displacement. Sherp weighs around 1.3 tons and its payload is one ton, making it useful in situations where you need to deliver specialist equipment in hard to access places. So buckle up, safety first. Now uh, here I've got the battery switch and that's already switched on and here I've got a traditional key like in any other car all I need to do is press the clutch really deep there's a sensor so if I don't press it all the way it's not gonna work but this one works okay so we've got traditional gears like in a normal car we've got a traditional clutch and the gas pedal but the brakes are here so one breaks the left side the other one breaks the right side and the sharp goes accordingly so let's go Okay. All right, I think I got a reverse here. And what's confusing is that I turn with the brakes as well. So let's just put it in reverse and off we go. And now the steering is also quite tricky, but okay, here we go. First gear and Sail away! Yeah, it does it much better in second gear. Okay, so off we go. And now we turn. We let it go and in we go into the water. And it's that simple. And to be honest, right now it's rather quiet because it's just cruising along without much gas. If I give it some more gas it's becoming much louder I can put it into third gear there's a bit of a wave but hey this is how it works and uh, it looks easy peasy apparently it's much easier on water than in rough terrain where you have to control all sorts of twists and angles etc now let's go with a turn you also have to remember that sometimes there's a wave, sometimes there's some wind, etc. Okay, let's take a turn here and go into second so that we can go out the water nice and smooth. I think we've got ground and here we are. As simple as that. This is really cool. braking with the steering thing. Okay. Excellent. Who is the Sherp for? With prices starting at around $100,000, it's hardly a weekend toy for your ordinary off-road enthusiast. Sherp is classified as an ATV and as long as speed is less important than staying afloat, it is hard to beat. But Sherp is mainly a vehicle for specialist use. It could come in handy for rescue services, where there's a need to quickly access people trapped in a remote location, or for companies maintaining and repairing energy infrastructure, like gas pipes or power grid, sections of which are often in hard to access places.
So this is the Go Anywhere Sherp. How do you like it? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos of strange vehicles like this, support me on Patreon or PayPal. Links in the description below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.